company. This is Bill Goodwin, speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap that's pure as fine Castile. Well, it's Tuesday night again. Time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our guests, Jack Benny, Jimmy Cash, Felix Mills and his orchestra, and the Swan Tech. And now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, it's morning in the Burns home, and George is just coming downstairs to leave for the office. Good morning, dear. Good morning, darling. Look what the postman just brought you. A present from Pat O'Brien. Oh. I'll bet Pat is sorry he started that rumor about me being a juggler. Open the package, dear. All right. I met him yesterday, and I told him a few jokes. I guess that convinced him I was a comedian. <laughs> what, uh, what are you laughing about? What's in the package? A set of Indian clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I get my hands on that oh, Irishman, cheer up, believe me. George. Before long, everybody will know that you're not a juggler. They'll know you for what you really are. And uh, what uh, what is that? Well, a singer, of course. Oh, oh that. Oh, sure. I-, I wrote to our sponsor and suggested that you sing on our program every week. That's the twelfth time. Yeah, but this time he answered. Say, that's a good sign. Open the letter. Mm, wait till Bing Crosby hears you sing. He'll retire and start to raise a family. <laughs> Oh, Gracie, I'm not better than Crosby. As good, maybe, but, uh, well, <laughs> open the letter. What does the sponsor say? Believe me, there are plenty of other big programs that would like to have George Burns as a singer. Gracie, the letter, open it. Well? George, what are some of the other big programs? <laughs> Turn me down again, huh? Oh, never mind, dear. You're a great singer. Even Bill Goodwin said, with, with a voice like yours, you ought to sing in our big army show. Army show? Yes, it's in charge of some officer named Major Bose. <laughs> I'll forget it. <clears throat> i better get along to the office. Yeah, I'll ride down in the bus with you. I, I have an appointment at the beauty shop. Okay, let's go. No way. Uh, before we leave, won't you sing something just for me? Oh, Grace. Oh, please, dear. Just one little glorious burst of melody. <laughs> Well, all right. <clears throat> Just a gigolo, everywhere I go, people know the part I'm playing. Oh, oh. God, you're wonderful. I won't be happy until your voice leaves the whole world the way it leaves me, weak and limp. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, come on, I'm due at the beauty shop in five minutes. What will it be today, Mrs. Burns? A shampoo and set? Oh, yes, and I'm kind of in a hurry, Josie. Well, I'll do my best, Mrs. Burns, but we're shorthanded, and I have to work on the customer in the next booth, too. The old horse face, I hope he chokes. He? You mean there's a man in the next booth? Well, sort of a man. Josie, where are you? Oh, that's him. I wish he'd go sit on a hot curling iron. Josie, come back here. This finger wave of mine stinks. <laughs> is awfully familiar. I wonder who... Josie, do you hear me? This finger wave stinks. All right, all right. Leave your hair on the table and I'll do it over again. <laughs> oh, no, Josie. I'm sure I know that man. What's his name? I'm not allowed to tell, Mrs. Burns. The old goat scared the newspapers might find out he goes to a beauty shop. Oh, come on, Josie. Give me a little hint. Well, he's the stingiest man in Hollywood. Oh, Stingy, huh? And how? When he gets a mud pack, we have to save the mud for him so he can put it in his victory garden. <laughs> Funny. I can't get it from that. Give me another hint. Well, let's see. Um, uh, he used to drive an old broken down Maxwell. Uh, no, it's no use. I can't guess who it is. <laughs> You're not missing anything. He's tried to date every girl in town, and nobody will go out with him. Oh, oh, hello, Jack. How's Mary? <laughs> Gracie, is that you? Well, yeah, come on into my booth, Jack. Oh, sure, sure. Ha, <laughs> 
Oh. Hello, Gracie. I guess you're surprised to see me here. Oh, yes, I am. Well, you see, Mary lost her bobby pin the last time she was here. I, <laughs> I dropped by to look for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the bobby pin situation is. Terrible. Oh, sure. I bet you thought I was here to get a beauty treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Gracie, you sound like you don't believe me. <laughs> Maybe that's because I don't. <laughs> well, if I'm lying, may something terrible happen to Phil Harris. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Benny. Yes? Here's your mud. I wrapped it up for you. <laughs> oh, well. Phil always played too loud anyway. <laughs> well, Jack Benny in a beauty shop. Oh! Wait till the girls hear this. Now, Gracie, look, listen, you must oh, promise girls, me. I brought your swan soap. Oh, hello, Gracie. Oh, hello, Bill. Why, Jack Benny, what are you doing here? Well, I'll tell you, Bill. He's well, a... Bill Goodwin in a beauty shop. <laughs> Wait till the girls hear this, huh, Gracie? Wait a minute. I just came over to bring some swan soap. Well, Bill, I... Oh, Bill Goodwin has beauty treatments. That's really something to tell the girls, huh, Gracie? Hey, look. The operators here use swan soap. Not only because it's so mild for the customer's complexion, but because that same mildness makes it great at home. For the dishes, light laundry, or for bathing the baby. Swan's the new white floating soap that's four swell soaps in one. Well, Bill, well, I... Bill Goodwin and a beauty child. <laughs> I, I thought that curly hair wasn't natural. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. No girl in this shop has ever laid a hand on me. Except, of course, after working hours. <laughs> oh. What are you doing here, Benny? Oh, well, I'll tell you, Bill. Jack is... Hey! Bill Goodwin and a beauty shop. <laughs> I'm getting manicures and everything. I am not. My hands just happen to look gorgeous because I always wash my dishes with Swan. <laughs> oh. Swan is great for washing the dishes. Gives you loads of suds. Suds that are so mild and gentle your hands don't get that rough red dish panty look. Well, Bill... Bill! Bill! <laughs> One in a beauty shop. And I, have his, and I have his eyebrows plucked. That's something, isn't it? Now, look, Jack. I told you, I just came here to deliver some swan soap. Swan's a great wartime buy. What I want to know is, what's Jack Benny doing here? Well, I'll tell you, Bill. Where is he? Bill, go all nuts. Goodbye. <laughs> Gracie, Gracie, look, for heaven's sake, don't let out my secret. I mean, I don't want everyone I meet to know I've been taking beauty treatments. Oh, don't worry, Jack. They'll never suspect it. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, don't you tell. You know, if the newspapers get hold of it, I'm cooked. And you know how the gang would kid me on my program. Oh, yeah, your program. Uh, Jack, you don't want this to get in the papers, huh? No, I I'll do anything to keep it out, Gracie, anything. Oh, good. Uh, starting Sunday, Jack, George will sing on your program. <laughs> George? Yes. Sing? Uh-huh. Gracie, I've heard prettier noises come out of Carmen Lombardo. Hi, <laughs> Gracie. Excuse me, Jack. I'm going to telephone a little news item to the paper. Wait, wait. Oh, you mean George Bird? Yes. Oh, George, your husband. Yes. Oh, old sugar throw. Sure. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I, I don't suppose it would hurt if George sang on my program once. Well, I was thinking of having him sing every week. <laughs> no, no, no. No, well, I'll call the paper. But, Gracie, this is blackmail. <laughs> I know. Cue to me, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, cute, cute. Right. The Swan Tet joins our popular tenor Jimmy Cash in an enchanting ballad from the top musical show of the year, Oklahoma. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling Everything's going my way There's a bright golden haze on the meadow There's a bright golden haze on the meadow Born in this 
high as an elephant vine, and it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Oh, what a beautiful morning! Oh, what a beautiful day! I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. Okay. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. Oh, what a beautiful day. Well, we're back at the Burns home now. Jack Benny is pleading with Gracie to change her mind as they wait for George to come home from the office. But but why does it have to be my program, Gracie? I mean, why don't you have George sing on Eddie Cantor's program? Well, because I didn't catch Eddie Cantor in a beauty shop with his toupee and collars. <laughs> hey, there must be some other show he can go on. Maybe maybe Gabriel Heater needs a singer. <laughs> or Mr. Anthony. I mean, why don't you let George be his problem? Oh, you, you amaze me. How can Jack Denny, who has the greatest talent in the world, fail to recognize George's talent? Oh, 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 do you really think I have the greatest talent in the world? Well, certainly. Rochester, Dennis Day, Mary Livingston. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. And now I've got a big thrill for you. I have your program for next Sunday night all planned. You have? Yes. It'll be the new and entertaining Jack Benny program featuring George Burns, California's answer to Frank Sinatra. I, look, I, I can't do it, Gracie. I mean, I can't allow George to sing. Well, shall I call the papers and tell them about the beauty shop? He sings, he sings, he sings. <laughs> now, listen to the way I have the program all worked out. Hey, you're the star, so of course you come out first. Thank you. Your line is, Hello. And then George comes out for his opening number. I just say hello. Well, we could make it hello, everybody. No, no, I don't want to hog the whole show. <laughs> well, then George sings his second number, and back you come again. Good. To announce good. George's next number. I hope my throat stands up. <laughs> and then right after that, Dennis Day comes in. Dennis Day? Yes. Well, doesn't George do all the singing? Well, yes, but I thought you might want a few laughs on the program. Oh, yeah, I'll be glad to have them. I will, yes. And, uh, then as soon as George finishes his next number, I'll come... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Gracie, George can't sing the whole program. I mean, he's not that good. I know music, you know, I'm a musician. You are? Well, I play the violin, don't I? <laughs> well, don't I? <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> Look, Gracie, all that I'm at... Why, Jack Benny. Hello, George. How's the juggling game? <laughs> I'm not a juggler. Why doesn't everybody stop with that? Oh, now, dear, don't get excited. Jack has some marvelous news for you. Tell him, Jack. What's that? I think I'll go call the papers. All right, all right. I'll tell him. Oh, good. I'll run out and make some coffee. Well, Jack, what is it you want to tell me? Well, first... First, I'd like to remind you that you're my dearest friend, George. And you're my dearest friend, Jack. I mean, you're even more than a friend to me, George. You're even more than a friend to me, Jack. I love you. I love you like a brother, George. I love you like a brother, Jack. I mean, I'd never do anything to hurt you, George. Thanks. Wait a minute. I'll try that again. <laughs> I'd never do anything to hurt you, George. I said thanks. George, look, I mean, I wouldn't louse you up if you had a comedy program. If I had a comedy program. <laughs> I mean, look, you're my dearest look, friend. Look, Jack, wh what's the news, I Jack? I mean, you're even more the, than the, a friend the, of me. The news, Jack. Look, what's the news? What hell do we've always said, uh, The news, Jack. You have some news for me. Look, remember the time in Cincinnati when you were broke and I gave you $10? It was Cleveland, Jack, and I gave you $20. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I have the state right. It was Ohio. <laughs> yeah, the news, Jack. What's this news you have for me? Well, yes. Well, dear, did Jack tell you the news? No, not yet. He's been he's been leading up to it by the way of Cleveland and Cincinnati. <laughs> Jack, I'll bet Little Abner won't be the funniest thing in the paper tomorrow. <laughs> oh, all right, George. Look, I want you to sing on my radio program. Why, Jack Benny? Now, now, don't be really? hasty, George. I mean, don't don't jump at it. Uh, think it over for the duration. <laughs> I don't have to. I'll sing a dozen songs for you, pal, and it won't cost you a cent. For free? Sure. No, no, no. No, I I can't think of it that way. Well, all right, then you can pay me. No, I can't think of it that way either. (laughs) I know what's making Jack hesitate, dear. He hasn't heard you sing recently. Sing ain't misbehaving for you. Sure, glad to. Sit down, Jack. No, I'll take it standing up. (laughs) Now, come on, dear. No one to talk with all by myself. No one to walk with. I'm happy on the shelf. Ain't misbehaving, saving all my love for. Oh, baby, love you. Really saving love for you. <laughs> he doesn't juggle at all. <laughs> no. I know for certain you're the one I love. I'm through it flirting. It's you that I'm thinking of. Ain't misbehaving, saving all my love for. Oh, baby, my love for you. Jack, what makes you think he's a juggler? He must be. <laughs> Jackie Horner, in the corner, don't go nowhere. And I don't care all your kisses that you gave me, baby. Daddy, daddy, daddy. I might be blood and guts, but that's just guts. <laughs> Stay out late and I don't care to go. I'm home about it, me and my radio. Hey, misbehaving, saving all my love for you. Well, Jack? Gracie, call the newspaper. <laughs> Time for Felix Mills and his orchestra. Tonight, from Felix's memory album, it's Honeysuckle Road. something? I got the impression that Jack Benny didn't like my singing. Oh, George, that's silly. Didn't you hear him tell me to call the newspapers? He wants to give them a big story about you. Yeah, but I noticed that while I was singing, he, he kind of turned green. Oh, well, of course, of course he turned green. You sang exactly like John McCormick. Oh, so that's what it well, was. Well, sure. Now, I'll go in and talk to Jack. You stay here and spray your precious little ad night. Okay. From time to time and every time. Jack. Yeah? 
Well, naturally, you were joking before when you told me to call the newspapers, weren't you? Not me, Gracie. Look, I'd rather have everybody know I was in a beauty shop than have Sugar Throat smell up my program. <laughs> well, I'm warning you, I'll phone the paper. Phone them. This is my last warning, Jack. Go ahead. I'll phone the paper. Phone them. This is my last warning, Jack. Go ahead. I'll phone the paper. Phone them. This is my last warning, Jack. Go ahead. I'll phone the paper. For Pete's sake, phone them. No, Jack, no, I can't. I'm too fine, too decent. I can't stoop to blackmail when I see it isn't working. <laughs> now, now, please, don't think I'm a heel, Gracie. I'm... Gee, I'm kind of animals, I'm fond of children, but I, I just don't like George's voice. Oh, you're fond of children, huh? I love them. <sighs> Poor little Junior. Poor little who? Junior. He'd be so proud if he knew that his daddy had sung on the Jack Benny program. Gracie, you mean... Yes. George and I are parents now. He's the father and I'm the mother. <laughs> Gee whiz, I, I can't believe it. How, when did it happen? Well, I don't remember exactly. We were so excited at the time. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Good old George has a baby. It hardly seems possible. Yes. I was amazed when George told me. <laughs> I just can't get over it, Gracie. I'm so happy for you. So happy for George. Who does the kid look like? Like me. I'm so happy for the kid. <laughs> Say, could I, could I see him? I'm crazy about kids. Really, Doc? Oh, sure. I mean, many, many's the time I bought a bag of candy and blew up the bag to amuse a kid. <laughs> Imagine good old George, a father. Well, you can do something awfully nice for Junior. Let his father sing on your program. Gracie, I'm mad about children. Now, that... please, Jack. The baby adores you. When you're on the air, he lies in his crib, gurgling with his little foot in his mouth. When Fred Allen's on, he puts his foot in his ear. <laughs> Gee, what a smart little rascal. Oh, I, I know you'll do it for Junior. I can look in your sensitive blue eyes and tell that you won't disappoint him. They are blue, aren't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, George can sing one song just for the baby. Well, let him sing two songs. We're expecting another one. <laughs> really? Yes. Good old George. <laughs> Did I hear somebody call me? No, we were talking about you. Gracie told me everything. Congratulations, George. You mean I can sing a song on your program? Yes, sir. You deserve it. Gracie tells me there's going to be another one. Well, two would be fine if it's all right with you. <laughs> well, why not? Have you picked out a name for the second one? Would you like Moon Glow? <laughs> Moon Glow Burns. Look, won't that be just a little too corny? Oh, I don't think so, Jack. You know, while you were away, I took a few lessons from Crosby. <laughs> you did? Yes. Now, George, I know Jack's in a hurry. Yeah, yes, I'll be going. But, George, first, can I see the nursery? Well, Jack... The nursery? Hiya, what? folks. What goes on? Oh, Bill, am I glad to see you. Bill, I just heard the news. Now, why didn't you tell me that George and Gracie had yeah, a... Yeah, yes, Bill. Oh, why didn't you tell Jack what George and I had? Well, what did you have? An idea for you to announce Jack's program, and George sings on it. Huh? But I Oh, well, to... that's a great idea, Jack. I'd be glad to. Now, wait a minute. I have an announcer, Don Wilson. Well, okay, you can have two announcers. Don Wilson is two announcers. <laughs> but Don can't announce your program, Jack. He doesn't know anything about Swan Soap. Swan Soap? Well, sure. He doesn't know that Swan is the new white floating soap that's four soaps in one. The soap for dishes, light laundry, bathing the baby, or for your hands and face. Don doesn't know that. Well, I could teach him. I mean, what am I saying? I don't sell soap. I... I sell grape nuts flakes. Well, but, but that's ridiculous, Jack. Can you bathe the baby with grape nuts flakes? <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to answer that until I've talked to my sponsor. <laughs> well, 
I can... They're very resourceful, you know. Well, I they can... They may be working on that right now. <laughs> well, I can tell you the doctors recommend Swan for bathing the baby. Swan is so mild it's kind even to a little baby's tender skin. It's pure as fine Castile, too, so you know it must be great for your complexion. Gee, bathing a baby. Do you ever bathe that little darling of yours, George? Don't be silly. We take showers. <laughs> Uh huh? Oh, he, he means us. But the swan is great for bathing the baby. Oh, yes, and Gracie breaks it in two, so she can... Breaks it in two? <laughs> well, sure, Jack. Swan breaks in two, so you can use half in the kitchen for your dishes and light laundry and half in the bathroom for the baby or for your tub or shower. Oh, well, look, Bill, don't bother to tell me about swan so because I'm just using George on my program, not you. You see, I'm only doing it for Junior. Junior? Well, yes, George. That's what Jack calls you because you're so much younger than Jack. <laughs> no, no, look, I mean the baby. The baby? Well, yes, that's what he calls me because I'm so much younger than you. No, Gracie, look, I'm talking about your child. Child? Well, goodbye, Jack. See you at rehearsal Sunday. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Gracie, what does he mean, our child? Oh, dear. I knew there was something I forgot to tell you. <laughs> we haven't got a child. You. Well, so that's it, Gracie. Just to get George on my program, you invented a baby. Oh, no, I can't take credit for that. They were invented years ago. <laughs> don't try to get out of it. I don't want to sing on the radio if I have to get on by tricks. Now apologize to Jack. I'm sorry, Jack. And don't ever do a thing like that again. I won't do it. Ever, understand? Yes, dear. Come on, Jack, I'll walk you down to the corner. My goodness, George, what you go through with a name. Uh, hello? Hello, Fipper? This is Gracie. Oh, would you and Molly let George sing your program next week? Yeah, I know you've got a singer, but I thought you might do it for Junior. Yes, you see, he's just had a baby. And I'm just going to be here long enough to remind you that the government needs your waste kitchen fats more than ever before. Now, I know sometimes it's a lot of trouble to render the extra fat you trim from meat and to strain all your waste fats from roasting and frying. Those waste fats are so urgently needed for making glycerin. That glycerin is so necessary for making ammunition that I know you won't mind doing whatever you can. So don't forget, huh? Turn those waste fats into your butcher and keep turning them in. Well, here they are again, those ever-loving Burnses, George and Grace. Well, George, I've got some wonderful news. Little McGee wants you to sing on his program. Really? Yes. And uh, when he comes over to close the deal, would you sort of fold this napkin into a triangle? What? Uh, well, for some silly reason, he thinks we have a baby. Again? Good night, Good night. Good night. of Swan, the new white floating soap. Join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in to your Columbia station again next week, same time. Don't forget, George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS next Tuesday night. Now till next week, this is Bill Goodwin saying, well, I, Swan, how about you? Good night, everybody.